Once again, we give thanks to Almighty God for blessing us with the opportunity to study another portion of God's Word. Yes. We pray that uh, you have been enjoying your holidays and most importantly, as I've said before, that you are safe in your celebration of family and friends and fellowship. Yes. Um, it, is, it is fundamentally important that you adhere to what the doctors and the scientists have been telling us so that we can uh, make sure that we're back here if the Lord says another year. Yes. Um, I know we are spiritual people, but God has also blessed us prayerfully with the notion of common sense. Yes. And so I think, I pray that you use wisdom, you use common sense and discretion in protecting your health and those around you. Amen. Now come with me to Psalm 121 as was read into your hearing by Brother God. And I want you to notice Psalms chapter 121. The psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. And he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your uh, is your, your shade on your right hand and the sun will not smite you by the day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil and he will keep your soul uh, and the Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. I want to talk to you from the subject of what direction are you looking in? And now, we have come to a place in our life, in our time, where we are bombarded with negativity on television, the news, um, in our communities, uh, in our homes. We, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are bombarded with this pandemic, the uncertainties of life, the uncertainty of whether or not I'm going to uh, back to work again or whether I'll ever find a job again. We are faced with the fact of whether or not we're going to feed, be able to feed our families tomorrow, let alone a month from now. And, and, and then there are some who are faced with the, the, the idea of possibly being evicted out of their homes. Right. Uh, some who have already come in contact with this virus by losing a loved one or becoming sick themselves, uh, we have all types of problems that have hit us and that, have fa that we are now faced with. Uh, and now we often look to other things, we look to other people, we look for answers in other places, and oftentimes we fail to look for God. Yes. It reminds me of when you see the crosswalk, when, when people are trying to cross the street and they they hit the button to stop the light. They begin, they, they become impatient with the light and they hit it again. And oftentimes you hear the you hear the voice say, wait, yes. wait, wait. Why? Because at least the, the uh, at least the machine knows. That if you walk out there without looking in opposite directions and waiting on the light to change, you may get hit. And so oftentimes it is quite loud. You can hear it from your car. Wait, mm -hmm. wait, yes. wait. And you can see the person still pushing the button, still pushing the button. But the point is, you and I are just like that in life. You and I have to wait on God. You and I have to make sure we are looking in opposite directions for Satan and his demons, for entrapments, for, for, for pitfall. And if you and I walk out there haphazardly and we aren't looking for where God is, then we'll get run over by life, we'll get run over with sin, 
will get run over with bad decisions, will get run over with guilt and regret, all because we didn't look in God's direction. Amen. So the psalmist says, listen, I've got to go on a journey. And actually, I'm headed to Jerusalem as all Jews would so that I could worship God. But as I get ready to make my journey to worship God, guess what I see? I see hills. Mm -hmm. I see mountains. But you may say, well, Mr. Pilgrim, what's the problem with the mountains? What's the problem with the hill? He would say to us, don't you know that those hills harbor and hold fugitives, vagabonds, robbers. In those mountains, there are wild, savage beasts waiting to, uh, on a prey to come along. Uh, in those mountains, there are pagans who worship the gods and their gods in the hills. He said, there are all kinds of distractions, all types of problems that arise. He says, even the terrain is rocky and stony. And as a matter of fact, it's easy to fall and break a bone. It's easy to slip from the rocks. He says everything about traveling those hills, he says, is uncomfortable. Everything about making my way on my journey to worship God, he says, it isn't easy. And so he says, I look at the hills, he says, but the thing that, I, that I'm perplexed about is not only the journey, but what lies ahead in the journey. He says, so I look to the hills, but then there's something else that comes to mind. He then ponders what's over the hills, and he says, from where will my help come from? Now he comes into the reality, not only am I faced with uncertainties, not only would I be faced with dangers, not only will uh, I, I may be able to, I may succumb to uh, all types of uh, calamities that are, are there waiting on me. He says, but then when I think about those hills, I look at those hills, and guess what? The first thing I see in the hills is not necessarily the problems, but I see the creator who created the hills. And that's the first thing you need to know when it comes to looking in the right direction, you need to know who is your source of help. Now notice, he says, I will lift up my eyes, which means he has a proper direction into which he's going. I told you, he's looking to go worship. He's, he's starting on a journey, but it's a dangerous journey. And don't you know, every time you get ready to worship God, every time you get ready to serve God, every time you get ready to put your best foot forward for God, Satan is always waiting to distract you and get you off track from meeting your God. He says, my source isn't the hills. My source isn't, uh, isn't uh, the, the, the creation itself. He said, my source is God who created the hills. Amen. Now look at, look at Psalm chapter 124. Look at Psalm chapter 124. Notice, uh, look at verse number 8. He says, our help is in the name of the Lord. Watch this. Who made heaven and earth. He said, my help ain't in the hills. My help ain't in creation. My help even in, in some man. No, no matter how strong he may be. He said, my help comes from the Lord who made and created those hills. Yes. He says, that's where my source of power comes from. That's why I'm able to go worship him no matter what I face with. Because I know that he who is great, he who is worshiping and walking, who I'm worshiping to and walking with me is greater than the adversity ahead of me. Yes. Then you need to understand when you know, when you're looking in the right direction, your outlook determines your outlook. Don't miss that. Your outlook, when, you, when you've got enough spirituality to look up to God, 
in weight of your problems and your situations, it gives you the proper outlook on life and the situation you're faced with. The psalmist, this psalmist, this pilgrim says, listen, when I look up, not only did I see the hills, but I saw the God of those hills. And he says, that outlook gave me the right outlook. Mm. What happens to us, we look at the problem and only the problem, and then we become discouraged, we become depressed, we become frustrated, and we give up on God. The problem was you looked in the wrong place first. Yes. You got to look up so you're going to have the right outlook. And then faith drowns out fear of taking the journey. Now let me make this clear. He has to go on a journey. Mm -hmm. And he knows who is going to walk with him on the journey. But you can't experience who's willing to walk with you until you first enter in the journey. Yes. The problem is, you and I, the, many of us, we backtrack because we don't, want, we don't want to go through that journey. We don't want to go through the adversity. We don't want to go through the hurts of life. We don't want to feel the pain. When all the, all the while, God is saying, if you just stick with me, I'll get you through your journey so that you can have peace untold. The problem is, we run from the journey. And many of us never experience the fullness of God and his power because we run from the journey. The psalmist says, no, faith in the one who created the hills, it drowns out fear. Look at another part. Look, look at another one. Look at Psalm chapter 96, if you will. Psalm chapter 96. Look at Psalms 96. And Psalm chapter 96, verse 1. Psalm chapter 96, notice it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, for he is wonderful, for his wonderful deeds among all the people. For great, watch this now, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He says, for all the gods, well, let me, let me read it again. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all the gods. Now notice, I told you the pilgrim understood that over in those hills were where it was a place where pagans often worshiped their idol gods. Well, the psalmist here says, listen, God is to be feared above all gods. He is to be revered. He is because he is, he is greater than all. And then he says, he says, for all the gods of the peoples are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. He says, so listen, I can take my journey over those hills because it's God who is the creator of all. I can take my journey through that adversity because it's God who is to be revered above all. Yes. And he says and those idols are simply mere man-made idols. Yeah, yeah. So now, come back. Now, the, so the second part to this is when you recognize, when you're looking in the right direction, you have, you understand who's the source of your help. But then secondly, you're going to understand that when you look in the proper direction when going through trials, you will have assurance of help. So the source of help, when you recognize who's the source of help, you will then be assured of your help. Now watch it, watch it. He says, from whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And watch verse 3, he will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. The word keep is used six times in this, in this text. And it speaks to the fact that God is the one who watches over you. He protects you. He renders care for you. He's always on guard for you. Don't you know that God, he's going to tell us, is a God that never sleeps or slumbers. So he says, listen, God, in essence, will not allow us to fail on our journey. Amen. 
Watch this. Come look at Psalms chapter. Look at Psalm chapter 31. Look at Psalm chapter 31. And Psalm chapter 31. Notice verse number 2. Incline your ear to me and rescue me quickly. Be to me a rock of strength and a stronghold to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. You will put me out of the pull me out of the net for which they have secretly laid for me. He says, even though those robbers and thieves are waiting on, on prey to come through, innocent people to take advantage of, he says, listen, God, you will pull me from the net. You will deliver me. You've got to have a God will in your life. You've got to have a God will. God can. God, listen, God is great. God is awesome. God is powerful. Why in the world do we spend time with pessimistic thinking, small thinking, uh, scary thinking, fearful thinking, and a war is me thinking? When we've got a God who He created all the world, He sustains the world, He keeps the world, and God will protect His people from the world. Amen. You gotta know that. He says it's, a, it's an assurance of help. Look at verse six. He says, "I hate those who regard vain idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in Your loving kindness." Look at that. He says. He says, because you have seen my affliction and you have known the troubles of my soul and you have not given me over. Watch this. You have not given me over into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a large place. I just believe when I read about God, I just believe God would rather the world be destroyed than his people. Amen. God will allow this world to burn up and dissolve before it destroys his own people. Amen. Well, you got to know what God means for you to purpose in life, prosper in life. And what God has for you, when God's hand is on you, he will make sure you do not fail. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He's ever observant. God is always observant. Pull up, pull up Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34 and verse 15. Look at Psalm chapter 34. Look at verse number 15. He says, the eyes of the Lord are toward who? The righteous. And his ears are open to who? Their cry. Who's the their? The righteous. And then he says, and the face of the Lord is against the evildoers. To cut off the memory of them from earth. Well, that just seems to me, if God is going to cut the memory off of the evil people, then just seem to me, these people's legacy will live on. Amen. Yeah. You got to hear, and why? Because what God purposed for you will not fail. Amen. And when you understand that, it gives you confidence, but more importantly, it gives you assurance mm -hmm. to take on the journey. He's, ever, he's always observing. And he is always concerned. Now watch this. God, so on the journey that this pilgrim has to take, he understands God will not let him fall. God won't let him slip. God will keep him protected. You know why? Because he understands God is concerned with where he walks and how he walks. Yes. He's concerned with where he walks and how he walks. Now, the other reason that this, this uh, pilgrim can journey on such dangerous territory is because he understands God's presence is beside him. God's presence. Look at, let, me, let me get back there. Look at, look at verse 5 and 6. He said, well, let me just say this too. Now, verse 4, he says, Behold, he who keeps Israel will never slumber nor sleep. Which means, stop worrying about your problems. In other words, go to sleep and start trusting the one who never sleeps. Yes. Go to sleep. Stop walking around with bags under your eyes. Stop walking.
walking around with your eyes bloodshot red. You, 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 you don't know where, whether you're coming or going. Stop allowing Satan to invade your mind with all that depression and doubt and fear. Go to sleep and then trust the one who never goes to sleep. Amen. He says, behold, he who keeps Israel will never slumber nor will he sleep. And then he says, the Lord is your keeper and the Lord is your shade on your right hand. He says, God's presence is beside me. That's why David could say in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Amen. He understood God's presence is beside me and I can walk through this journey. Yes. Don't care how dark it may be. Don't care how, uh, how, 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 how tragic, how tough, how terrible things may seem at the moment. You can still get through it when God is beside you. Then he says, then he, he, he understood that God will allow hurt to strengthen us, but it will never harm us. Mm -hmm. In other words, God, what God allows will often discipline us, but it's not designed to destroy us. Right. And every time God allows us to go through some turbulence, he allows us to go through some hard times, some difficult times. You got to know God sees you better than where you started. He sees you being stronger. He sees you being wiser. He sees you being faithful. He sees God sees all of that in you, but he sees it already in the end when you come through it. Yes. The problem is we aren't willing to go through all right. Now, the other thing you got to know, his presence is beside us. But then I want you to see that and how Isaiah talked to God's people. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 41. I, I was trying to wait on this one, but I got to show you this. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 41, y'all. Isaiah chapter 41. You got it, Travis? Isaiah chapter 41. Look at verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 41. Notice verse 10. He says, do not fear, for I am with you. Didn't I tell you God is beside you? Right. <laughs> do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxious. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I told you you got to look in the right direction. He says, quit looking around anxiously for me. I'm right here with you. Then he says, I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. And surely I will uphold you with my righteous, look at this, with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be ashamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing will perish and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you, but you will not find them. And those who walk with you will be as nothing and non-existent. Look how God describes your enemies. Then he says, For I am the Lord your God who upholds your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. In other words, God is saying to us, Not only will I walk beside you, but I'm going to hold your hand. Amen. <laughs> it, reminds me, it reminds me of the young man who the father who was trying to teach his son, young, his young son had, uh, had a, was invited to a birthday party and, uh, and, his, and all of the boys uh, there at the birthday party, they were going to bring their new bicycle. One of the requirements uh, that was made by the, the birthday boy was that you had to bring your bikes and we were all going to ride, they were all going to ride their bikes. And so the young boy, the, 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 the man's son, he didn't know how to ride a bike. And so, because he felt he was a big boy, uh, there was no way that he could go to this birthday party with a bicycle holding training wheels. <laughs> he did not want to be seen riding a bike with training wheels. So he asked his dad to teach him how to ride a bike. His dad said, okay, son, they, got, they bought a bicycle. Uh, they got out there, and where they lived, there were steep hills. So he said, there ain't no way I'm going to teach this boy how to ride a bicycle going down the hill. Right. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to train you, son, to ride going up the hill. Well, the son gets
dad's on the bike. The daddy is holding the seat. And the son is pedaling. He's struggling a little bit. But then the dad can see him getting a little stronger. His legs are, are, are pedaling a little harder. And then the dad sees that the boy is getting stronger. He's getting more efficient. That now they are traveling at a fairly high rate of speed. And now the dad is running with the boy. But then all of a sudden, they get about halfway up the hill. And his son looks back and says, Daddy, you can let go of the, of the seat because I got it now. And the daddy, who was really out of breath, he said, Boy, don't you know if it wasn't for my hand holding this seat, you wouldn't have gotten up this hill. I stopped by the day to tell you, don't let go of God's hand because if it wasn't for God's hand holding you together, you wouldn't get through your journey. If it wasn't for God holding you together, keeping your mind in perfect peace, you don't know where you would be right now. Give God praise that God is holding your hand through the journey. Amen. Amen. His presence is beside me. Oh, His presence is beside me. But then lastly, lastly, this help is comprehensive. It's complete. It's thorough. Look at, look at the text. He says, the, uh, the son, verse 6, the son will not smite you by the day. Then he says, nor by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Look at how comprehensive this is. In other words, his, his help is comprehensive because it keeps us from all harm. His help is comprehensive, but it because it keeps us from all evil. His help, excuse me, his help is comprehensive because not only does he protect our physical life, yeah. but God is so awesome, he protects your soul. Amen. Amen. Yes. His help, and this is what you need to know, his help is constant, powerful, efficient, and his help is realized when you start the journey. Look at look at uh, look at uh, Psalms chapter fifty six, if you will. Look at Psalms chapter fifty six and verse number thirteen. Psalms chapter fifty six here. In Psalms fifty six and verse thirteen, notice what the Bible says. But it is you, a man my equal. My, I'm sorry. That's that's Psalms fifty five. Psalm fifty six verse thirteen says, "You have delivered my soul." I know he didn't say, he could have said, you delivered me physically from my enemy. But that's not what David said. He says, you have delivered my soul from death. Indeed, my feet from stumbling. So that, now watch the purpose. So that I may walk before God. In the light of the living. You know why God preserves you? You know why he protects you? You know why he keeps your hand, his hand on your life, and his hand in your hand when you're walking through the journey? So that you can show the world just how real God is. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Showing you how real he is in your life. Well, let me give you another one. And then we're with Psalm 66. Look at Psalms chapter 66. Psalms chapter 66. Look at verse number 8. Psalms chapter 66. It says, Bless our God, O peoples, and sound his praise abroad. Why? He who keeps us in life and does not allow our feet to slip. For you have tried us, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the uh, brought us into the net. You laid an oppressive burden upon our lords, and you made them and ride over our heads. He, we went through the fire and through the water. Yet you brought us out into a place of abundance. But you gotta go through it. They would not have realized the awesomeness and the power of God. They would not have realized the abundant blessings God has for their life if they weren't willing to go through the fire. Yeah. They said, God, we went through it all. 
But notice, they didn't go through it alone. They went through it with God holding their hand. That's right. What a blessing. Let me give you one last one. And then uh, 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 Psalms 125. Psalm 125. Notice the Bible says, Those who trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Now Mount Zion, the Jew understood, that's the place where God sits on his throne. That's Jerusalem where we worship. That's where God is. He says, listen, those who trust in the Lord, you'll be like Mount Zion. In other words, you will never be moved. If there's someone who can move God off his throne, he says, then you tell me, because that's when God's people will be removed from the earth. Amen. Just as sure as God is, un as man is unable to move God off of his throne, he says, by the power of God, God's people are unable to be moved by any person or circumstance. Mm. Then he says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. I told you God is with you, but you got to look in the proper direction. Yes. Got to look in the right direction. Why? Because if you look in the right direction, he'll keep you from all harm and evil. Yes. Look in the right direction, he'll protect your life, your soul. Look in the right direction because his help is constant. It is efficient and it is powerful. Look in the right direction because he's, he should be our only source of help. Look in the right direction because his presence is beside me. Look in the right direction because he gives me assurance that I can make it through this journey. Amen. Listen, I don't, know, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I pray that this has helped you. I pray that you understand that God is still in control. Amen. That God is still all powerful. Yes. That God is still Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He'll be beside you. He'll hold your hand. Yes. He'll give you clarity. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you light so that you can walk through dark tunnels. Mm. Yes, God will. Amen. So there may be someone who's not a child of God. And you want God's hand in your life. You yes. want to walk with God. And you want, you want to live in the purpose of God. Yes. The blessings of God. Mm -hmm. Well, guess, here's how you do it. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. You've heard the word of God. Believe that word. With all of your heart. Jesus said, if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sin. Amen. Yes, you. And then Jesus said, listen, if you don't repent, you will perish. Yes. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus would even go on to say, whosoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Whosoever denies me before men, him will I deny before my Father. And then be baptized for the remission of your sin. Peter would say the light figure where unto baptism doesn't also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But the answer or the appeal to God for a clear conscience. Paul would then go on to say in Galatians 3. For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Yes. Yeah. Peter would say. Peter would say repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. And God will walk with you. He'll hold your hand. He'll give you guidance. He'll give you assurance. Mm -hmm. And he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. God bless you.